I just don't get it. I just don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why is this happening? Why do Christians have to fall into sin? Why? It just seems like this is a good, that supernatural talk, episode 11 topic. And I believe this is something, well, hold on before I say this. I got a guy that needs a little bit of this really fast. Self-care is for everyone. Well, today, self-care is for Keegan. Here you go. Go ahead. There you go. There you go. All right, guys. Let's talk about it. Episode 11, guys. Isn't that wild? We've been doing really, really good with these episodes, these topics. And we were sitting here because here's here's the transparent truth. We had to come up with a topic last minute and it hit us like the wind because that's what the Holy Spirit does. He's like a wind. It just came on in and just gave us a topic for today. We're going to talk about why Christians fall into sin. And you'll probably be able to hear some of our personal testimonies. Uh, but before we do this, ah, you guys are going to be happy and here's why we have glory boy number two back in action we have keeg's ice over here what's up baby (laughs) hey yeah there's a lot of subliminal reasons he has that tissue in his hand anyway and we got glory boy number one we have the man of god himself representing the west coast la (laughs) and didn't even come from the west coast You're on the east side, represent the west side. It don't matter. We represent the kingdom of God here. And beside him, you guys, if he wants to show his head on the camera, we have Glory Boy number three. We have Mark Jean. Uh, Representing America via Haiti. I think, but he's more, he's American, obviously, but he's Haitian American. Let's just get over it. He's from Haiti, (laughs) but he was born in America. His family's from Haiti. Amen. All right. Amen. Then we have Polyvou Francois. Fue, fue, say. What? <laughs> what a way to start this podcast. Thanks. Thanks. Ah, you got a sticky here. Come in a little close. Let Chris, let him know you're here, man. We have one of our OGs all the way from Europe. Come Over there and America. say hello, Chris. Come here, America. Bonjour à tous. Frenchman, for real. Yes. And he's related to Bonaparte. He's all the way from France. And he is a, a, a airline steward, stewardist, steward, not a steward. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I tell this podcast is going to be fire. Amen. It's going to be a fire podcast. He's an airline steward. You still crying, Keeks? <laughs> yes. Oh man, yes, a little I bit. Am. He's a, he's going to be an he's an airline steward, and uh, he's been with the ministry for about three years, and we see him often. We're going to be doing amazing things in Europe here soon. We're going to be hopping around. Seeing a lot of people set free, people healed, and prophetic words given. There's going to be a lot of good stuff happening. So I'm excited. I always love having Chris around. He is a solid one. He's a real one. Um, But anyway, we're going to jump right into this thing. Why do Christians fall into sin? So here's the obvious answer, right? They, They don't stay connected to God, meaning in their own way. God's always connected to us, but they lose connection within themselves because they're not obviously focused on Him. They're not aware of him because they stop praying. They stop reading their word. They stop working for him, meaning they stop doing the works of the ministry. um, And they just lose it. And then next thing you know, flesh becomes real. And then they have this huge, horrible deal on their hands. So if you you disconnect on purpose, well, you got to connect to something. Remember, God keeps the connection. You just got to do your part to recognize that connection is there. So no temptation also comes. You know, resist the devil and he'll flee. No, you can't be tempted beyond measure. So, just well, well, you can't be tempted in a way that God can't get you out of it. God's always there to pull you out. And if you get deep in the waters, he'll pull you out if you call on his name. All who calls, all who call on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. Amen. Amen. But I got stories on even myself in the past how I had moments where I was rolling down that gradual hill of destruction. Um, you know, when we fall into sin as Christians, it's not something that's just like bam in your face. It's like little things. Remember, the Bible says the little foxes spoil the vine. So it's giving yourself over to little things and never confessing it. 
that's a big thing is like holding on to things. Like, I don't mean to call out Isaiah, but a while back he held on to some, uh, some things about four to six months, I think. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then he would finally come and tell me about it. And I'm yeah. like, man, why you got to, you had to have been tormented for sure. in your soul for four to six months. Now, when I was a fresh new Christian, I would do those things. But you know, when I f- have fallen into temptation, not fallen into like uh, habitual sin, but I, I always bring it to the forefront. I'm always in a place where if I see something I shouldn't see, I hear something or whatever it may be, and I haven't had a place of transparency, I mean, I'm doing it in private or in secret, I'll come and I confess it to somebody to keep myself safe, to keep the devil, the voice of accusation that comes from the devil, because he's the accuser of the brethren, from being able to have power over me and start sending these signals to people to come and, you know, just demean me and shame me or whatever it may be. So, Hidden things are those little foxes that come in and eventually they'll spoil the whole thing mm-hmm. because it ain't only one. It's usually another one, another one, another one. Remember, the, 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 the falling down the mountain to the bottom happens gradually. It's a gradual decline. You think you're climbing up and you slip, 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 and boom, you're at the bottom. So if you want to avoid that, stay in relationship, avoid the temptations, and be transparent transparency is key. Have people around you that you're accountable to, that you can reach out to, that you can talk to, uh, that, that can be a blessing in your life so that you don't end up getting getting snake bit, if you know what I mean. Mm. But anyway, I want to talk to you guys. What you guys think about this? Why, why, do you, why, would, why would you guys believe that Christians fall into sin? I know I've covered a lot already, mm. but just speak a little bit on that matter, Isaiah. What, mm. what was it that kept you in a place where you held on for so long, you know? Proverbs says, uh, a man who isolates himself is a fool, right? Or despises wisdom, right? There's, that's well, a, despises wisdom, yeah. Right, there's a, there's a verse in Proverbs that says, a man who isolates himself despises wise counsel, despises mm-hmm. wisdom. And I think a big part of it is, is Christians isolating themselves and kind of putting themselves on the island. Because think it's a, you think it's a performance thing? That's part of it. I just it's it's that's part of it. There's definitely like a realm of, of that too. And Meaning whole, thinking of yourself higher than you should. That's that's even that's even a whole thing too. So like you you just mentioned like sections. Ooh, watch this. Mm. Ooh, this is deep. Mm. I, this is deep. What you just said about this, I I, I forgot about this one. Proverbs eighteen one: A man who isolates himself seeks his own desires. There we go. He rages against all wise judgment. Mm. Mm, that's deep. So, when you choose to isolate yourself, you're you're seeking your own desires because mm-hmm. you're saying, "I want to hold on, mm-hmm. and I don't want to. I, I want to live my way and not be accountable." Mm-hmm. But go ahead, continue. Amen. And I've like those two things that you mentioned, uh, thinking of themselves above themselves or a performance that that falls into its own category. You know what I'm saying? But like, it's almost like people thinking no, that like no one's relating to them, or they or no one's can make the same mistakes that they made. I know for me personally, when I was trapped in my own mind and my own sin, it was like, I should know better. And like, no one can relate to me now or like, I can't get grace anywhere because I, I've known I've known and I've done, right? It's, it's, it's better to know. It's better to not know and to do than to do knowing, you know, or to not know or to know and not do, you know? So it's, it's like, you, you feel like you're on this island. And in my opinion, I feel like the enemy can attack someone individually by themselves more than if he's, you know, with a group of people. And even Jesus walked with the 12. You know, he could have just done everything by himself. But I feel like it was all for a reason. I think we're better, stronger together. And a lot of his people isolate themselves. They're not honest or transparent with anyone. Anyone. They don't think anyone's for them. They don't think anyone's in their corner. And once you're in that place, you're in a very dangerous, dangerous place. And we see that in Proverbs. When you isolate yourself, you seek all wisdom, all sound wisdom, the desires of your own self. So that's what I, that's what my... Two cents, and then if you want, if you want to touch on those other things, thinking yourself higher. I remember again, even in my own opinion, I'm like, I'm th- I'm thinking so highly of myself. Of my oh, I'm this whole man of God, and I'm in this position, blah blah blah. blah. This happens to a lot of leaders as well. That's that that hide because they're leaders. Mm-hmm. You know, they they hide because they're leaders and they're in a position of authority, and they think that either a and this this can get crazy deep. Either a they don't want to talk about it or expose themselves or be transparent because they're afraid of losing their position. Or because they're afraid of people thinking of them as something else, you know, even though like they're human, you know, and it's kind of like they're, they're, 
they're like lying to themselves. So in my in my own opinion, I'm like in my own life, I'm like, I'm like I'm this whole man of God. I've known the Lord, blah blah. blah. I've seen the hand of God, and how the heck? Oh, that's good. That's okay, right? That's okay to say that, right? How 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 am I gonna be here doing this? And I've and I've known the Lord. I've met the Lord. I've done all these things, you know. So it's like I can I can see why someone's gonna be like I can't talk about this. I can't do this because. Like I am who I am, but then that's also pride and thinking themselves higher of who they are because we're all like on our best day, just filthy rags, you know, our righteousness. So mm. yeah, that's my my two cents, man. Ago, that's some deep truth there, buddy. That's some good stuff. Personally. I love that you backed it up with scripture. You know, one of the things that a lot of believers struggle with, as yourself in the past, mm. um, and myself and other people, is you know selfishness, which leads into lust and all these other things. And when you get into them places, it causes you to hide because it'll, you're scared that you will be shamed so much. You'll lose position. Mm -hmm. Um, you're going to get fired. Mm -hmm. You know, your spiritual mentor, father, whatever is going to kick you out, Mm -hmm. whatever it may be. So like, that's why those sins are so bad. And when Christians fall into those sins, they become so private and this is why a lot of believers get attacked by the devil so much and demonized in some ways is because of hiding things. You know, anytime I've done an event and I come up to people, I reveal something by the grace of God, usually that is hidden. Mm-hmm. And then they start getting delivered and set free. But if they would have just been transparent, it would have been a whole lot better thing. You know, Isaiah reminds me when I do meetings, you know, sometimes I'll pray mm-hmm. and, and like things take a while to pop off. Mm-hmm. And I'll go into the crowd. I'll find one area. I'll reveal the sin in that person's life by the grace of God, and by the love of God that's holding them back. And then a whole thing will break out. Yeah. And it's like you pop the cap on that one thing and the whole place will go crazy, mm. you know, because like it's on. <laughs> you like you found the pressure spot, you know, and you hit it. And here we are. Now we're in full blown deliverance. Mm. Um, so, you know, concealing sin, hiding sin. Hiding your your failures is not smart. Bring it to the light, because if it's in the light, the darkness has no dominion and reign over it. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we stay transparent and we don't allow sin to have reign over us, because Jesus Mm -hmm. died for sin. He he took sin out. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the whole reason he came and did what he did, so we could have power over sin through his death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. So, And, and, And even that transparency that you're talking about, Especially as a Christian, and if you're listening to this, listening to this, and you're a Christian, like the example Apostle just gave of you know one person gets exposed, and then everyone's like, okay, like it's safe to come here, right? It's the same concept with a believer who who's transparent, and the people around them seeing this are like, oh wow, he struggles with this, or oh wow, he's been open about this. Now I can be, you know, just because it's actually happening, it's in front of me, it's real, and it's like, oh wow, like we're humans, like oh wow, like. People make mistakes just like me, you know. Some people don't, would never see that, would never know that, until you know you start speaking and start being honest. And even, even with you, man, of God, you've talked to me about stuff, and I'm like, this man is a whole human, you know. And like, and I never, and it, it to me it was like so far from me, and it was so far away that people like they had these problems or they had these 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 issues or these battles or these struggles. And I'm like, oh wow, like I'm not crazy. I'm like, oh wow, like. I can receive grace, or walk, and I can get better. You know, you've you've overcome, you've 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 beaten this, so it's it's possible. You know, so it's like a for it's like forerunning that as well. Mm. Amen. Um, Keeks, you've been quiet over here. I'm just I'm I'm receiving. Yeah, I'm learning. Yeah. yeah. What have you done in those moments when you have been concealing stuff? When I've had had to come and pull the cover off of the issues. Amen. No, no. What have you? <laughs> what have no, you it's done? It's true. It's true. Um, a wise man once told me that self pity is a super glue to hell. You know, a wise man told you that. You know, you're talking about me, but a wise <laughs> man taught me that, so I'm just passing it down. Okay. So I had a minister <laughs> that taught me that self pity is a super glue to hell. Amen. Hell. I'm just giving credit where credit's due, yeah. and now I'm passing it on. Amen. And also, another wise man once said that a fly cannot land on a hot stove. <laughs> now, I know that you got that from, from me also. Yes. But I also got that from another wise man named Reinhard Bonnke. Yes. So I'm just passing it on. Yes. Well, whoever, whoever the wise man was said that. And 
in Proverbs 12, 1, it says, he who despises correction is stupid. They are fool. So a fool despises correction. A fool despises um, crushing. Uh, he despises, you know, being under the refining fire, right? So as they were talking about with, with isolation, um, trying to stay in the darkness, um, it's, it, it's foolish. And so one thing that you have to do that I've realized that people who are in habitual sin, who are living a life of iniquity, it's self-pity, it's, it's rejection, it's pride. And mm. so one thing that has to come to the forefront is you have to acknowledge that you have an issue. You have to acknowledge, okay, there's something, there's a deeper rooted issue here that I need to face. And what so many Christians do is they will come out of the limelight and they will go back into the place, they'll backslide into the place of darkness, into the place of isolation, fear, rejection, depression, anxiety, all those things, because they're not able to face reality. And somebody, another wise man said that there's a time where you, as a, as a man of God or woman of God, you have to be able to look in a mirror and look at yourself and allow your flesh to die, right? Allow everything that the enemy's trying to do in your life to be exposed. And so one thing that you can do during those moments is really come to a place of humility because in James 4, it says that, you know, he opposes the proud, but he exalts the humble. And so the the best thing you can do is become broken before the Lord and lose dignity, literally lose dignity. Like that's all you can do in those moments. Um, I'm telling you, were it's you, so were much you a big there. isolation guy Um, in the past? Yeah, absolutely. I would go, I was, I mean, I would go into moments where I didn't want to face face my issues. I didn't want to face my problems. So I would run and hide. And I, I was super, super extroverted, but I would go into moments where you wouldn't see me for two, three days. I'd just be isolated in my room, depressed, alone, you know? Mm, um, that's why you've been dying you know, a lot lately, lately to the flesh. Because you amen. haven't been able to run and hide. Because here comes Daniel for your amen. Um, cry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyways... I would say what you're talking about is what what to do. And if anybody, if you're maybe you're in the moment right now where you are, you feel like you're hiding something, you feel fearful, you are, you know, um, you don't know who to confide in. First of all, it says that he who confesses his sins, right? I believe that's somewhere in the Bible that he who confesses his sin to his brothers shall be set free or something like that. Ah, right? James, the, right? Yeah, it's yeah, in yeah. James. He who confesses yeah. their sin to one another. Yeah, yeah. You, you, exactly. Exactly. Confess your sin to one another. Yeah, so yeah, yeah confess you your you sin. Healed. And um, when when you bring something to the forefront, then it's it's exposed, it's out there. And then therefore the devil can't do anything with it. So what I found out is like, just put it out there. Literally just, just put it out there. I don't, there's been times where I have been confronted with something and I thought that I would lose everything. I was like, if I say this, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to lose everything that I've worked for. I like everything that I've put down on the line. I thought I would lose it. But what happened was, is that I ended up becoming more free and I ended up being able to truly live in freedom and, you know, be transparent with people who are guiding me and helping me and mentoring me. Um, and so, yeah, the devil, the, the devil loves secrets. He wants to keep you in secrets. Mm. Um, he wants to keep you in secrecy. So, uh, the best thing you can do is not, not hide secrets and yeah. just be vulnerable and transparent in everything you do. You know, and transparency has levels too. So you first you become transparent to someone you trust. And then what happens is that transparency becomes part of your testimony and then you, the Lord will give you the green light to release it to everybody. Because if you are transparent with somebody and you haven't conquered an area in your life, you don't want to go and reveal it to everybody because you're trying to make something a testimony that isn't truly a testimony yet. Yeah, you know, so you, you want to make true. sure that's you want to make sure that it becomes a part of your testimony. Like I testify about my past all the time because obviously I'm not going to go back into that by the grace of God because I know the repercussions of falling into immorality and sin and, and getting into a destructive place. So I testify about my, my testimony, right? It's my testimony. Mm -hmm. The Lord has 
picked me up from the ashes and there's beauty from ashes. Um, but a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll take this, they'll make it their testimony and then they'll disappear because they tried to prematurely make something that they haven't defeated a testimony. Mm. Mm. And people do that very, so people do that very often, wow. especially young people in ministry because they want to be relevant. They need, they want to add to their testimony and things like that. And here's something else. You don't have to go send to build your testimony. Let your testimony be your testimony. Hey, I, I don't have the same testimony as this guy, but my testimony is Jesus saved me too. You know, don't mm. go and try to make your testimony big on purpose. Just trying <laughs> yeah, to be somebody. Yeah, trying to be somebody for sure. So, yeah, that's good stuff, man. Self pity is the super glue to hell. If you feel pitiful for yourself, then that's pretty much saying you don't trust Jesus and, you know, you feel sorry for yourself. And nobody's called to feel sorry for themselves. Jesus didn't feel sorry for himself on the cross, so we shouldn't be that way either. You know, it may be for a little while you might, but eventually you got to let that thing be worked out of you so that you're not sitting there suffering and continuing to fall into the same thing. I see people that do get in self-pity. They they continue to make excuses for their sin. They're like, yeah. oh, well, this, and, you know, I'm just that, and this just won't change. And, you know, people that start talking like that, I mean— their mind is in a bad place. They mm-hmm. need to renew their mind. They need to get in the Word, and they need to know the truth of the Word. Yeah. You know? Or they blame other men and women of God for them not getting set free. Yeah. When it's really their own. It's, it's their own yeah, things they, they, they work out and deal with. Exactly. They need a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit is the one who will lead them into all truth. A man and woman of God is not the Holy Spirit. They have the Holy Spirit within them, but they need to let you know the Holy Spirit goes with you so that the Holy Spirit can continue to lead you into truth because the truth shall set you free. The truth sets you free. The truth keeps you on the narrow road that we're told to walk, that love walk, right? So, Does it, Doesn't Revelation, and this is kind of rough, this is kind of tough. You know what I noticed? Anytime I say so, Isaiah jumps in. I'm not mad about it. I just noticed the key for Isaiah to jump in is when I go so. No, I, I, try, to, I try to bounce Y'all, off. Y'all watch. Y'all go back into podcast. You'll hear so. It's like, so Isaiah's is green light. I promise, guys, on the podcast, I'm not upset. I'm just saying, I just noticed that. This is because it was the second time. So, but go ahead. This is your so moment. Hey, you get it? So moment. The so moment was real. <laughs> um, in Revelations, it says, in like, the cowards, the like, cowards would be thrown into the, the lake of fire. And every time I used to read that, right? It says cowards, right? Mm-hmm. Bro, every time I would read that, I'd be like, I'd be like, bro. I'm scared of like this or I'm scared of that. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to be a coward, you know? And it was like, it was almost like saying like, it's because the fear is like a huge emphasis of like lack of trust, lack of faith. And we say by faith. So it's like, it's like God doesn't want us to be scared. Like, like he, he, he looks at fear like, come on now, like you don't have that. You know, it's almost like a person that, that has a spirit of fear isn't adopted, doesn't have the spirit of adoption. So it's like, it's huge. Like the, the fear, like is huge. So when you were saying that, it was like, like it brought that to my mind, that verse to my mind. Oh, it says, yeah, uh, Revelations twenty one eight. Um, it says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars. Their place will be in the fiery lake of burning Cowards. sulfur. Cowards. Yeah, because like you truly, if you're a coward, man, then you you, you know you're you're. You're truly not, you know. You know how many times I've prayed, Lord, Apostle, I've been like, Lord, I don't want to be a coward. I'm like, Lord, please. Because I feel like well, you're I'll not feel, a coward. You're right, a son right. of God. Amen. I'll, but, I, you know, like your mentality, you're talking about the self-pity. I would feel like a coward. Like I would 100% feel like a coward. Like if I fall into sin, I don't want to talk about it. And all I have to do is talk about it. And to me, it's like the biggest thing in the world. I'm like, I'm being a coward. I'm like, man, I'm like. Lord, I'm a coward. And I'd be like, Lord, I don't want to be a coward. I, it, it was like a prayer. It was like a hard prayer. And then by the grace of God, here we are. And I've I've talked about my L's, some L's I didn't want to ever talk about, even though, like, you know, people have done worse. But to me, it's like the end of the world, you know. But mm. Losses crazy. losses are wins. That's deep. Losses are wins uh, in the kingdom, meaning if it, it isn't truly a loss. I mean, you consider it a loss, but it's not a loss because – God uses humility for for wins. He says he exalts the humble. He he uh, you know opposes the proud. So we, we got to look at it in a sense of like humbling, being humble, mm-hmm. admitting that we need a savior, admitting that we need Jesus. 
we've all been in those moments of being being cowardly, man. I mean, it's it's true. Um, especially when we haven't had the revelation of being set free and and you know having dominion over sin through Jesus Christ, we act like cowards. So, and I know some I know some of you in here you're watching this and. On here, you're watching this, and you're saying, well, this is really hitting home for me. Well, this is just you know, the green light from the Holy Spirit that you can now be transparent and, and receive your freedom and walk in victory. Amen. You know, you don't, you don't have to fall into sin. Because here's the thing. Your sin will find you out eventually. If you don't expose it, it'll expose you. Amen. If you hide it, eventually it'll make it, itself known. It's just the bottom line. And yes, grace is there to help you, but eventually, you know, <laughs> the devil's going to take advantage and, and that sin will, will expose you. And then you'll be in guilt, shame, and condemnation. And remember, the Bible tells us there's no guilt, shame, and condemnation to those who are found in Christ. So you're not guilty. You're not ashamed. You're not, you're not condemned because Jesus has set you free from them things. So walk like a person that is not guilty, shame, and condemned. If you walk like a person that's not, then, then you know, sin, like I said, won't have dominion over you. You'll be... You'll be just out and open, and you'll have nothing to be ashamed of. We are not ashamed of Christ and the salvation He's given us. Amen. Amen. You know, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Romans one sixteen. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, sin is destructive. It's messy. It it destroys a person. It destroys families. It destroys friendships. It destroys ministries. Sin is bad. You know, and Jesus paid a price for it because he knew how bad it was. And Christians, you you don't have to fall into it. It doesn't have to be your identity. And if you do, and if your heart is correct, you you will know that you have a lawyer who stands on your your behalf in heaven for the propitiation of your sins, meaning meaning he's, he's standing there in the gap for you saying, no, Father, this one is mine, you know, or no, Lord. So... Know that Jesus is your lawyer. He paid the price. He made the contract in heaven for you. Blood bought. You're a blood bought believer. Don't forget that. And if you do sin, the Bible says, you have a lawyer in heaven who stands on your behalf. Okay? It ain't it doesn't say that you want sin if you do sin. Because let me tell you something. Nobody's perfect but Christ. And making mistakes and going through things is so that we can you know, grow and and continue to go in the right direction because we're being taught something that we may not have known unless that mistake was made. So don't beat yourself up for mistakes either. A lot of you guys that are younger in life and in ministry, you know, we put these perfectionist things on us and then we fell over and over again. We feel like we're not good enough. Well, <laughs> that ain't what Jesus paid for. He was perfected to perfect you. He was perfect so that you could be perfected. Amen. Ah, that's good. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But is there anything else you guys got on this topic that you can think of? Is there anything that you guys want to share with the viewers oh. that, <laughs> that they may need to know? So, oh, oh, so I didn't say so, but he said so that time. Keep so going. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is talking to you. Like, I... I I I remember when in those like low moments, and I didn't want I didn't want to be be open. I didn't want to be transparent. Like God was speaking through everything, like He was speaking through everything, and nine times out of ten I was ignoring it, but I knew it was Him speaking to me, and it, it, and it was me trying to like justify it in my mind that it's okay, that I'm a, I'm gonna be okay, that. I, you know, I've confessed it to Jesus. I've talked about it with, with God. That's all I need to do. But it was like I'm bound to this because I can't speak to, to it with, with anybody else. And it's like my heart was was getting heavy. So I, I was just going to say, like, the Holy Spirit is speaking. And he's speaking through everything. He's speaking through that friend that you're, you might be falling into sin with. He's speaking through the social media posts that you're scrolling through. He's speaking at your job. He's speaking through the food that you're ordering at the restaurant, like, He's speaking through everything. So if you're like, God doesn't really care, I'm I'm telling you that's the complete opposite. He cares so much that he's willing to speak to you, speak to you through any form of communication possible. 
And if, you know, if he speaks to the wind and the earthquakes and small, still voices, he'll speak through that um, waiter at the restaurant or that um, random advertisement that you're watching on your phone. He'll use anything. But, yeah, that's so why I, I wanted to put those two cents. God is speaking to you. It says, the Bible says, does he that made mouth, uh, ma- did he that made the mouth and ears not hear and speak? Like he, he literally said, he's like, I made the mouth. Of course I speak and I've made ears. Of course I can hear. So he's listening to you and he's trying to get your attention also. Uh, that's what one of these podcasts is about, to let you know that you don't have to stay in the ground, man, right. and get back up. A righteous man will fall seven times, but they will always get back up. They will mm. always stand up and start walking forward. So Amen. don't stay down just because you've gotten hit. Amen. Man, I feel like I feel like Keeks hasn't made a lot of an appearance on here today. He's been quiet. Yeah, he has. He's been kind of quiet. <laughs> Are you in a certain type of season at the at the uh, recording of this podcast? I'm doing great by the grace of God. Ah, by the grace of God. Amen. Yeah, I just I do want to say this, if I can encourage somebody, because I remember that I was in a moment of pride and just shame, guilt, and condemnation, and. I didn't know what to do, and um, the Holy Spirit kept saying, like, you know, talk to the man of God, like, say something, say something. And I felt that. So just know, like, as Isaiah was was talking, like, the Holy Spirit speaking, but a wise man said to me, and I'll never forget it, he said to me. Who is this wise man? This wise man, this (laughs) wise man. He said to me, he said, an unclean hand can't touch something that's clean, and it's not that it can't touch it, but when it does touch it, the thing that is clean will become filthy, right? Therefore, meaning that the dirt, the filth will be exposed. And so I just want to encourage you guys to um, allow yourselves to be cleansed. Obviously, you're, you're washed by the blood of Jesus, but allow yourself to be cleansed and just know that it's okay. It's going to be okay. And um, I just encourage you guys to not allow um, not allow the devil to keep you filthy through condemnation. That's the, that's that's the biggest thing. Do not allow filth to come in through 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 condemnation and believing the lie that you can't um, come forth in humility to allow yourself to be cleansed because um, you've been bought by the precious blood of Jesus. So can I can I, I just can I add to that real quick? Real quick, mm-hmm. real fast. Like, it is not the end of the world. I think I said so. By any means. I'm, it, it, so is the key word. Yeah. The if you say so, did say so. If you say so. Whoa, we, I think we're prophetically if, onto something right now. If you're saying so, watch out. Because Isaiah is on the, on the soul, on the road. Jump on it. <laughs> but, man, I got, I'm, it's like, it's like I felt like it was the end of the world. And it's not the end of the world. No. But, by any means, like. God is in the business of restoring people. <laughs> like the devil does a great job of making your sin look like the biggest thing since sliced bread. And there's, it's just you. Like no yeah. one else, just you. There's eight billion people in the world. Trust me. If a few people want to pick on you for your sin that you haven't, you know, you've been hiding. Trust me, there's a lot more people out there and there's people being born every day. We make bigger deals out of things than we should. Amen. Guys, our world is the world that we surround ourselves with, okay? There's 8 billion people. There's people in this world that don't know you, that you, some of them you won't meet until you get to heaven, <laughs> you know? There's people you're going to meet in heaven, you'll be like, you were a person? Like, you were around? I wish I would have met you later on. That's the beauty of heaven, man, is we're going to have these, you know, things going on and hang out with everybody and get to know everybody. So... Just remember, it's bigger to you than it is to everybody else. Mm. It's your situation. It's your problem. And your problem will disappear, and you'll feel okay again when you release it. Because in the midst of you trying to be okay, you're not okay. You think by hiding it you're okay, but really it's killing you on the inside. It's attacking you. It's, it's, it's wanting to take you out because that's what sin does. The wages of sin is death. Sin has a wage, and it's death in some area of your life. So... Just let it go, man. And this isn't no Disney pun stuff, you know what I mean? Just let it go. It should have been a Holy Ghost song. 
because that's the but it is truth behind it though mm-hmm. let it go there's truth Amen. Maybe, let, maybe there's, there's a, a saying song. let go let god maybe that's a new song maybe it will let it go ah mm-hmm. prophesy let go let god guys let go let god i believe this this podcast was done for a reason and mm-hmm. i believe you're watching or listening to this for a reason and it's because god is saying i have a lot of grace i have a lot of mercy i'm long suffering i'm kind and I'm willing to help you out of the situation you've been suffering with. I'm here as a good father to catch you, to hold you, to love you, and to allow you to be restored and to get back to where you need to be. He's a good dad, man. He's a really good father. He's so good, he'll make you go, yay, God. That's how awesome he is. So don't be scared to be transparent and let it be known. And who cares what anybody thinks? It matters what God thinks, not what these other people think. If God thinks highly of you, he'll get other people to look at you in the same manner because he is the one that we want favor with. Remember, it isn't favor with man and then God. It's favor with God and then man. So make sure that God's favor is upon your life because man's favor is limited. God's favor is unlimited. And so is his grace and so is his mercy and his compassion. He has unconditional love for us. Amen. All right, guys, this has been episode 11 of that supernatural talk. And I think it wasn't one of our longest episodes, but it was a very impactful one, a very needed one. Listen, we all fall short, guys. Get back up. We all fall short of the glory of God. Get back up. Reveal what's going on. Don't wait for a prophet or God himself to come around or an angel to come (laughs) and reveal it for you. You reveal it before you go to a prophetic meeting and here comes the prophet revealing what's happening. So... (laughs) You know, just let it go, guys. Let it be known and keep moving forward and do what God has assigned you to do and stay around people who truly care about you. Don't isolate because that's not smart. Okay, it's going to be okay. If you learned anything on this podcast, learn this. It's going to be okay, and you're going to do greater ahead than you would have by holding on to something that God never wanted you to hold on 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 to. All right, guys, I'm going to pass it right now. On to Keegan that'll have some quick announcements for you. Keeg's Ice, that is. Go ahead, Keeg's Ice. Take it away. Thank you, that Supernatural Talk family, for watching episode 11. Guys, we just want to thank you for your continuing support of everything that the Lord is doing in Apostle Daniel Adams' life and through the global movement the supernatural life that he has been entrusted with by God. As you guys know, this is an online global movement. So everything that you're seeing, all the videos, all the live streams, it's all done through online. That means we need your guys' support. So in the description below, there will be links on how you guys can support that Supernatural Talk podcast by becoming a monthly member on our uh, website hosted by Buzzsprout or The best thing, join the channel, become a member on this channel. You'll get exclusive behind the scenes videos that are out of this world wild. You'll get exclusive posts and updates, uh, early access to videos. So make sure you guys become a member of that Supernatural Talk. It will be life changing for the glory of God. Thank you guys so much again for your support and uh, ways to give again are in the, the links in the description below. God bless you guys. We love you so much, and we'll see you on the next episode of That Supernatural Talk.